Welcome to the Blow Up the Blueprint podcast, where it's all about how to use creative thinking in your business for a standout brand with your host, Joe Gifford. Welcome to this episode of the Blow Up the Blueprint podcast with me. It's Joe Gifford here, joined by the lovely Kaylin Asher. Hi. Hi. I'm going to totally confess that we just did a whole little thing and we were speaking for a few minutes and it was going off. And then I had this moment of we're not recording. So we've just kind of done a little preamble and I'm just going to come back over that again. Sounds good. <laughs> Hello, my lovely. So I was just complimenting you on how wonderful you look and you were telling me that you have an eight-month-old child. And oh, I do. Yeah, I have a three-year-old and an eight-month-old, both girls. Ah, oh, both girls. Oh, my twins, both girls as well. That's, that's awesome. And you're back to doing interviews, having taken a break. Yeah, I'm back. I'm ready. I just launched a brand new program. I'm feeling good. <laughs> cool. So I, I want to hear all about this. So, you know, for anyone who's not heard of you, who hasn't, who hasn't encountered your work, then tell me all about it. Yeah. So I'm a coach for women entrepreneurs and I didn't honestly know what that meant for many, many years. I was like, <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be working with women and helping them. And now I've been doing it for probably three years now. And I've really hit my stride helping women do what I've done, work less and while working less, still expanding their business and maintaining a nice work-life harmony. I think balance feels a little stagnant. Harmony feels good. And so that's what I work with my ladies with. Let's figure out what the container of time you have is that's mm -hmm. available to build your business and put the pieces of the puzzle into that container. And it works a lot better when we focus our energy, I found. That's mm -hmm. when my business took off, when I started working just three days a week. And there's really something to that, getting clear on your boundaries around your time, your professional time and your personal time. And so that's what I love talking about. And that's what my whole program's about. It's what I live and teach and everything's about that. Beautiful. We're going to delve into all of that because all of that was just gorgeous. Yeah. Up in there. I was like, I love how you've created this for yourself. So let's take a step back. Have you always worked in this manner with this harmony or has it been something which developed for you? I always wanted it. I didn't always believe it was possible. So for probably the first seven years of my entrepreneurial journey, when I'm doing all sorts of random things, trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing, I'm blogging and teaching yoga and working in social media, like doing all over the place, trying to figure out what my thing is. And there was this mindset, I guess, where I thought you had to hustle to be successful. There was a lot of masculine advice out there about how that, you know, you had to stay up to all hours and work an 80 hour week. And then you'd have this tipping point into success and then you could back off. I really didn't like that idea. It sounded <laughs> like, awful. working for me. <laughs> yeah, it sounded awful. But I, mm. and so then I had this thing of like, I'll never be successful because I'm not willing to sacrifice my life away. And then many, many years later, you know, I'm married and we're, you know, moving forward in our lives and find out we're pregnant. And I'm like, whoa, I really need to think about this whole work life balance thing because I don't want to be a mom who's working crazy hours making just okay money. <laughs> And not have time with my little baby who's arriving. And so I took some time off right after she was born, kind of figured out what I was looking for, deciding if I wanted to keep working at all. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what? One more time, one more shot. I could get childcare for three days a week. Thank mm -hmm. you to my mom and my sister. They're like, we'll help you out. We'll come mm -hmm. play with our grandbabies and our nieces. And so I tried it. I tried plugging my business into three days, working from like 9.30 to 4.30. And it wasn't an immediate change. It felt good at first. But then over the next six months, I working half the time, you know, if I was working about 20 hours a week instead of 40, I made as much money as I did the whole previous year. <laughs> And I was like, hey, there's something to this. And so I started exploring it even more and getting more structured and started outsourcing things and just made these incremental upgrades that allowed me to maintain the work time that felt good, those 20 hours, while having a lifestyle I really enjoyed. And the money piece was kind of this cool thing that sort of started taking care of itself because I think I just started acting more professionally because I was setting some clear boundaries and figuring out how to function more like a CEO rather than just sort of a hobbyist. That's a huge piece, isn't it? And I think that, you know, a lot of people, you know, myself included, skirt around that kind of experimental area of I'm freelancing, self-employed, kind of doing a bit of this, a bit of that. And like you, I was kind of lecturing, you know, I was doing a few days teaching and lecturing. I was doing some written work. I had my own sort of design agency stuff going on. I had fingers in all these pies, but I never, only up until like the last few years, has it been that I've stepped up to say, 
this is my container. These are my boundaries. This is how I work. This yeah. is who I work with. And for years, I was still taking on like all the clients because it felt wrong to not do that yeah. and working all of the hours. And mm-hmm. it's so freeing when you realize that you get to design your schedule. Yes. Yeah. That like, where did it come from that we should just like let our business dictate our schedule, dictate our lives? You know, we're, I found at the time I was very reactionary. It's like reacting to my inbox, take care of that. So a client would come up with an issue and I'd find myself spending way too much time thinking about their business and their issue instead of my own. <laughs> it was like, so how do you maintain those boundaries? So, you know, to say, cause I'm still not brilliant with this. I always have to kind of keep a check on it because when you love what you do and you aim to serve and all that sort of stuff, and especially when you work with clients around the globe, it's easy to sit there with your phone and be like, I'm just going to look on my Slack and just yeah. that thing. <laughs> oh, look, there's that thing. Oh, cool. I'm going to be on that. And then you suddenly, it's it's evening time and you know you haven't spoken yeah. to your partner in about three weeks. So, <laughs> so how do you manage that in your life? It's not perfect, right? It's like, I don't have it all figured out. I actually like- Thank you for admitting that though. Yeah, oh my gosh. I I actually was just talking to a woman who downloaded, created this three-day work week schedule freebie, like just a template to design your ideal work week. And I wanted to talk to her. I was like, hey, it seems like you're working this. And she was so much more scheduled and organized than I have. It's like, oh crap. Like, uh, you know, you can do something. But, um, but I, I think- You just confessed that though. Um, I saw one of my clients with this really beautifully designed, you know, sort of content schedule. I was like, that's awesome. She's like, well, it's your template. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. And I think the thing is for me now, like I've been living it for so long that I just kind of find my rhythm with it. And there's some days where, where I do work too long. I push myself too hard and I can find the energy dipping in the afternoon. And I'm like, okay, I get it. Like I shouldn't be working right now. I'm not putting out my best stuff. And then, you know, right now I'm in the middle of a launch and I'm tired, right? Launches, there's so much buildup before you even open the doors that by the time the doors open, you're like, is it done yet? <laughs> like, I finished now? I don't want to talk about it anymore, let alone. Yeah. I and, love that though, because I just wrote a piece today on Medium about the kind of internet marketing, you know, the lifestyle stuff where people aren't keeping it real, where there's, mm. that, you know, we gloss over the days where it's not so, it's like, I only work two hours a month, uh, yeah. you know, from my week. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. But, you know, has it always been the case? Is it always really sorted? I have you got your system, you know, is it yeah. like that? And I think we need to hear that. I love the fact that you use the word harmony and not balance and that this is a growing, flowing thing. It's not just, it us, here's my three days, I'm sorted. Yeah. <laughs> you probably have to check in with yourself, do you, Caitlin? To- I do, I do. And like today, I still wearing my, my comfy pants that I wore on my jog and I haven't yet showered, but... Exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm just showing Katie my legs, really. <laughs> yeah. That's sort of dead air piece there. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, you know, some days some things got to be left off the list, and some days like when something comes up with one of my kids, it's like my daughter had her first. She's three. She had her first field trip last week, and I was like, I can't miss this. And it was like plunk in the middle of my day, middle of my work week, like you know, from like eleven to one on a Wednesday. I was like, all right, well, can I move stuff around? I'm like, this is the reason I have this yeah. business, so I can do this stuff. And what am I going to remember more a year, 10 years at the end of my life working on that Wednesday or being there with her? So I had a really organized inbox on that Wednesday, but yeah. you know, I, <laughs> I kind of missed out on my little, my little one's field trip. And that's beautiful. Yeah. I am always so grateful that if my kids are poorly, if they need me, I hop on a on the phone or you know I'll get my VA to just kind of jump in and say guys need to move things around and I have no qualms with that now and because a lot of this is about working with the right people as well isn't it you know yes both for your team and for your clients my clients like cool no problem and we just kind of jump on and move it around whereas I know when I was trying to crowbar the wrong way of working with clients who weren't right it's very much well that's not professional to move things around you know yeah. family's like you know, but now it's totally my gig. I'm like, it is professional. My family comes yeah. first. If my clients had to move something because of their kids or whatever, I'd be like, absolutely. I want you to do that. That's yeah. important. And, you know, I think that again, there's perhaps that masculine energy of what and what isn't professional and what you should and mm-hmm. shouldn't do. We can tear up the rule book. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm no. over that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so over that because, you know, these little people aren't little for long. No, they're not. They grow up so fast. Honestly, my girls are eight now. I've got twin girls, Eva and Mia, and they're eight. They are beautiful and terrifyingly grown up right now. And we're kind of edging towards like the teenage sass and, and the eye rolls. Like, oh my. Seriously, yeah. mom. 
Um, <laughs> I know we're not that far before it will be, you know, the social media and stuff like that. And I want to be able to be really present with them and have an impact in their lives in a positive way. And I think that partly being an entrepreneurial mum, I know that they're really proud that I do, you know, my own business stuff, although they have no clue how it works. They're just sort of like, <laughs> you seem to sit by your computer and money comes. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. all I do. I, just, <laughs> yeah. I think that the growth mindset that entrepreneurs have is a great thing to have with your kids and be able to talk about that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. I know I'm a better mom for being an entrepreneur, like just showing them what's possible. That's something that you can just think about can become something that then helps people and brings in money and freedom in a bunch of different ways for your family. It's such a cool system for them to be exposed to. But talking about kids not understanding what you do, my daughter knows about like three-day work week because it's what everybody talks to me about and what the program is and all that. And she's like, mommy, are we going to three-day work week? I was like, no, baby, we're living three-day work week. And mommy's trying to teach other mommies to do three days of work because then they get more time with their kiddos. And so it was like this really cool thing of she doesn't get it, but she's living it. <laughs> she knows it. But you know, but how lovely that she knows the terminology and the concept. Yeah. And see, I remember my first kind of insight to outsourcing and leverage was of course the Tim Ferriss four hour uh, oh, you yes. know, work week. And at the time I was running my, you know, little design agency. And when I, you know, I think a lot of people have that moment when you read that book, you're like, everything's going to change. I'm going to outsource my life. It's all going to be 25. And I think because it was my first real taste of, okay, I can see the possibility. I mean, but his backstory makes it very different. You know, he was running a very different yeah. business model to most people. It you was. know, you need to couch what you read in that with imagination and apply what you can take for you. Do you sense any resistance when people come to you? What resistances do they have to designing their own schedule in general? Yes, yeah, so obviously they all want it, right? It's like, oh yeah, obviously I want to work fewer hours and make more money, but it's the mindset piece is a huge one of, I don't believe that this is possible. And then that coupled with, I don't know, okay, if I'm starting to warm up to believing it, I don't have a framework to that's for me. You know, like my three days, maybe someone still has a full-time job and they're trying to figure out how to build up their side hustle and their limited hours. Maybe someone's working 70 hours a week and just wants to cut back to 50. So I've done my best to figure out the principles behind three-day work week and what has worked for me, what's working for my clients and the women I talk to so that people can apply it to whatever is their ideal schedule for now. And knowing that's going to change so that, you know, in six months, you might say like, you know, I was cut back from 70 to 50. Now I want to cut back to 35. And you can keep coming back to those principles and making those incremental upgrades and living into it so that it, it feels good and you maintain that harmony that we were talking about. That feels, but even just saying that, by making those incremental changes, it feels like it's fluid. It feels like it's a working yeah. thing. It's a work in progress. It's a working template yeah. and framework. That feels immediately doable, doesn't it? As opposed to, and now you're going to lose sort of two days and immediately, yeah. <laughs> like a lot of us might panic about, well, what if our clients need us in those two yeah. days? You know, okay, so things like that. What steps do you have in place? for those days when you are unplugged? Are you unplugged entirely? I do a pretty good job of being unplugged because of the kids. I yeah. think that makes it easier because my priority just shifts. It's like them. Before I was a mom, I don't know if I would have been able to do it as well as I do now. Although I always did sort of hold my weekends as sacred. It was like, I need breathing time. Like I always knew that. So as far as talking about these shifts that people can start making, I think the first piece that's really helpful is just bringing some awareness to how you're currently spending your time. Like before we start changing things, like what are you even doing now? And so I always encourage people to do a time inventory Mm. And just set a timer on your phone throughout your work day. Maybe do it for like two or three days. And just every hour, like just make a note, a few notes, like what you spent that last hour doing. And you'll soon realize where you can like cut some stuff out immediately, where you can start batching things. If you're being very reactive, like, oh, I've checked my inbox 47 times throughout the day. Maybe I could cut that down to five, maybe just mm -hmm. once an hour and then cut that down to maybe twice a day. And this isn't even stuff that I necessarily do for myself always, <laughs> but like checking in with it once in a while, I'm like, oh yeah, let's remember that I don't need to constantly be in my inbox and like sifting through everything. So I find that just that first step can start shifting things without you even making conscious choices to shift it. Mm. And you also can see where you can outsource because if you're like, yeah oh, I spent so much time doing this stuff that I'm not really that good at and I don't really enjoy that I could pay somebody of 20, 30, 50 bucks an hour to do. And then I could get another client who pays me more money. You know, you can start seeing where you can play with it a little bit. It's like when you track money, isn't it? If you're not consciously 
trying to work on getting more the fact that you are aware of it and being aware of your time is so mm-hmm. important you know I know on those days when I have two longer work days and then and then three shorter ones so I do school pick up three days a week and I have two days where my partner does school pick up so we just kind of switch it around and uh when things blow up or, or the agency yeah. side of work is getting really busy and I'm a little bit like 3 30 is coming around really quick yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then you know on those days I am uber focused in my Pomodoro sort of Trello thing. I'm like, wait, mm-hmm. this is 10 minutes and I'm away from my phone. I'm away from anything else. I'm not doing anything else other than that task and staying calm. And when you focus, you know, your productivity is so much more impactful, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. There was actually a morning a few weeks ago where I literally had like a half hour of time before I needed to go do something. And this was probably on like a Monday where I wasn't normally working, but I had like 10 things I wanted to get done. I was like, this is never going to happen. And then I got it all done in like 22 minutes. I was like, oh, What just happened? It was one of those time magic moments where I was like, aha, this is how we do it. You give yourself that container and you kind of, the thing is you expand. Like, I felt this, and I love this analogy, like you move into a bigger house or a bigger apartment and suddenly the stuff that you had in the place that was half the size, it expanded (laughs) into all this more stuff everywhere. And we do the same thing with our time. When we have this vacuous work week, we just fill it up. And if we start shaving it down in ways that feel good and appropriate and then give us back life on the other side of it, we get all the same stuff done. And the stuff we don't get done never needed to get done anyway. It was probably stuff you felt like you should be doing the shoulds and also setting those expectations with clients and other people because you know if we're entrepreneurs who are real sort of people pleasers you know a big lesson for me was that actually the client doesn't expect me to email straight back the client is fine if I email (laughs) back like an hour or two or maybe even half a day and actually when I first had my twins this is eight years ago now and I I was running my design agency so I had young twins my chronic fatigue and endometriosis at the time so two massive health issues were still flaring Mm. they would when you've got young twins as well yeah. So I had a few things going on and I was like, I'm running this business, have the kids. It compelled me to find ways to work smarter, which I mm-hmm. still use today. So I hook up all these workflows to let tech do the heavy lifting, whether it's yeah. hooking up things that, you know, that when I finish a Facebook Live, the transcript arrives in Trello, or whether it's automating certain processes in my email so that they can always know who to go to and these are the steps mm-hmm. and follow this to eliminate myself. And I remember sorting those things out so that when I was sort of pushing the pram to baby groups or whatever, knowing that that was taken care of, yeah. you know, my clients were being served and that my team was serving them and now that I'm doing content agency stuff so my team is there doing it I have to trust that I've brought on the best people who you know my production manager is in there sorting out the content for clients you know my BA is in there sorting it my clients know when they're talking to me and I need to let go and be the CEO and sometimes <laughs> CEO means being on your bike and going to different cafes to get a head break and perspective because yeah. you work better so true Yeah. The breathing room is so essential. And I don't know where we got this idea that the best way to function in our businesses is to just like work all the time, all the hours, doing all the things because nobody does that. (laughs) Like nobody can do that. Like any amazingly successful, high productive person that's super efficient in their business and super successful is doing all the things all the time, all the hours. They just aren't. No, you can't. It's not sustainable. If you're going through like a heavy growth period or a launch like you are, and I know there's certain times where I don't mind picking up some hours on the weekend because I'm like, right, we're in expansion. This is fine. I'm going to do this, this and this, set up the processes, hand them off. I can see the light there, but I'm not going to be in on this forever doing, you know, on weekends. And whenever it's busy, or in fact, just any way to show up in your business, you need to eat right and go to bed on time. And Mm -hmm. All the usual, which is like self-care that enables you to be that entrepreneur in those concentrated days or hours even that you are working on it. If you're doing your side hustle and you're wondering how to build it, you need to do your self-care. You need to make sure you've slept. You need to make sure you're eating some good whole foods. You need to make sure that you are finding those breathing spaces because you can't hamster wheel yourself to success, Mm. can you? No. Where does that come from? That's such an expectation, isn't it? It's almost like an inherited concept. Yeah, I think for women, a lot of it comes down to like the guilt. It's like, oh, if I want this to be successful and maybe I'm relying on a partner or, you know, savings or something that then I should be doing everything I possibly can to make this work. And that means working all the time. And really that just leads to burnout, 
loss of passion, less ideas, less creativity, and you wanting to stop doing your business <laughs> because um. it's not sustainable. And if you build yourself up to a certain point where the only way to make that money you're making is to work a crazy amount of hours, that is a really tough place to then recalibrate mm -hmm. and embrace this idea of working less, but then still expanding because you're at a point where you're at a breaking point. You can't, you're at capacity. Have you read the book Play It Away by Daniel? I've forgotten his last name now, but I'm going to pop it in the show notes. No, I don't so think I have. He's lovely. So he was on, on Tim Ferriss's team. It sounds like I'm Tim Ferriss, you know, bashing today. I'm so not, you know, a lot of his stuff is awesome, right? He's a really interesting guy. So this guy was on Tim Ferriss's team and was behind the scenes of one of his big events. And in that kind of culture, you know, he talks about how it, it was quite the norm to have these extra, you know, sort of chemical help that was staying up all the time, but like, you know, sort of body hacking his way to be able to stay present and do sort of days at, at a time to stay awake and he hit burnout so hugely he was in a massive pit of depression and breakdown for ages and oh my gosh is now really vocal about it and I think it's great to hear a guy talk about it mm -hmm. as well because I know that in our female entrepreneur circles I'm really honest about burnout I'm really honest about when things mm -hmm. aren't right and to hear a guy say do you know what I hit rock bottom I never thought I was going to come back up I burnt myself my adrenals were fried I couldn't think properly and he's now built play as being a major part of his day so if someone says oh, oh let's have a meeting he's like well let's grab a coffee and walk or play catch in the park and do it that way and I think oftentimes people don't believe it's possible until they've hit that really painful burnout yeah. place where you can't function anymore and you might feel it starting on the edges where you are struggling you're not sleeping your body's not working right and you can't work out what's going on and it's just not worth it is it oh it's so not worth it and I love you mentioned that concept of play because I think a lot of people don't realize how important that is. And play is not my default nature. Like I tend to be like, okay, let's make a plan. And let's, I mean, yeah. hence like my whole business is built around like a three-day schedule. But I find it really interesting that most of the time, my new and best ideas come to me while I'm in a yoga class, going for a walk, in the shower, spending time with my kids, talking to my husband over a glass of wine on the porch. Those are when the good ideas come. Not when I'm like hammering it out at my computer, like I must make this work. We need that to give ourselves a break because it's just that's when the ideas wedge oh themselves in the cracks <laughs> that is where the creative thinking occurs and we talk about this a lot yeah. on this podcast that you need to build in those down times on a daily basis and actually kids know about flow and play more than anyone don't they oh, you know when I play with really. mine you know whether we're playing dress up or we, you know which at the drop of a hat I'll do like, yeah there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, or with you know whatever it is or we're out in the kind of autumn leaves like we were today or whatever it is they are present they are playful and they have amazing imaginations and I can see that even by working three days and having the other four off you're automatically built in that space and I'm glancing at my creativity research journal here there's a study in there which I'm going to link to in the show notes which talks about how you know sort of productivity increases hugely when you are in a flow state Mm -hmm. so by being able to link that as an important part of your business DNA you know it's important to go and play it's important to get out from behind your computer because this is not where the magic happens the magic happens away from the screen yeah. because there's like a million screens everywhere isn't there yeah <laughs> away, all over. From, away from all the screens that's not where it happens sure let's jump on let's connect with people let's I don't, tech is no is a wonderful thing you know I get yeah. to speak to you you know we get to connect with those people and we get to run our businesses remotely if we want to but that is not where those hits of inspiration or those incredible ideas which are game changers happen is it for sure. I mean, in the tech piece, it's like all this stuff is here to be in service of what we're doing, not for us to be a slave to it. And so I feel like a lot of us are in that place where it's like, oh, I need to be engaged and on and present and all the time in order for success to happen. It's like, that's, I don't know, I'm so about changing this. I'm like, I'm creating a three-day work week movement where we realize yes. that we can create success on our terms. We don't have to subscribe to someone else's version, which is probably... I mean, the 40 hour work week was implemented in like the beginning of the 20th century or maybe even earlier because laborers had eight good hours a day. 
So it's like, well, let's stay with that model, not question it. Let's Yeah. So, okay, here I am, a mom in the 21st century running an online business with all of this new technology and all of these new advances. And yet we're still subscribing to a system that was put in place. And also, years ago for men, (laughs) you know, going above and beyond that and layering it on. Like I see this now with millennials. I have a brother and sister who are younger than me. These guys work like six days a week because there's a corporate culture. There's an expectation to work that hard. And they're working like from seven in the morning until eight at night, six days a week. And it's like, guys, you don't have to do that. Like this is, that's, that's not... A, it's not sustainable and they, you know, they're kind of like in their 20s, so it's sustainable for now. But at some point, there'll be a breaking point, sadly, with lots of these, whether you're in corporate or you know, whatever it is you're doing, you can't work like that, sustain, you know, and, and sustain any output of any meaning. And there's an expectation sometimes in these cultures that that validates you. Yes. I'd rather be validated for working less. And for being mm-hmm. with my kids all covered in paint, thank you very much. Yeah. Rather someone went, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you on that one, 100%, for sure. Cool. So what is your program? And where can we find out more about this amazing three-day week? Yeah, yeah. So I have, first of all, my opt-in, my freebie is that three-day work week schedule that I mentioned. Okay. And so anybody can grab that at my website, kaylinasher.com. It's right on the homepage, easy to find. And as far as it the looks program- as well. I've downloaded it. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, we did a rebrand. Uh, what was it? A year ago, two years ago? And it's it's so pretty now. <laughs> Everything's very so pretty. pretty. It makes me very happy. As far as the program goes, I don't know, when is this interview airing? We are, it'd probably be in a couple of weeks, so that'll be middle of November 2017. Okay, so the program will be in full swing at that point, but the program is called Three Day Work Week, and it's exactly what we were talking about. It helps women bring some awareness to how they're spending their time, then create their model calendar, whatever that means for them, for the the container of time that feels appropriate and good. And I have a lot of women who are moving into the program who are moms, who want to be working from home with more time for their kids. There's a lot of newer entrepreneurs who want to set their businesses up right from the start Mm. instead of trapping themselves, working too many hours. Obviously, there's seasoned entrepreneurs who are like, I'm working all the time and I'm ready to start optimizing things and be working smarter. And then there's people in full-time jobs who are like, I want to get my side hustle going and I've got this little container of time. So it's anybody who wants to figure out what that looks like, that model calendar, and then fit their business in in a more strategic way into that time. So they have a framework that works for them. Gorgeous. So if we get your beautiful opt-in, then we can stay in contact with what's going on with yeah. your program where the next one opens the doors. Exactly. I love it. So how yeah. often do you run it? This is the first time I'm running it. Mm-hmm. So this, I'm thinking I'll probably do another launch probably first quarter next year and open the doors again. And then it'll probably be two times a year, maybe three, depending on... Um, you know, what feels good. And, but I talk about this all the time, you know, so if you get the freebie and you're maybe start hearing from me, it's what I jam on all the time because it's what I live. (laughs) Yes. Well guys, you know, I'm going to put the link in the show notes for Kaylin's amazing opt-in. So I'm going through it, you know, so going through those, you know, it's a beautiful template. So I want everyone else to have a look at it, you know, so check her out. It's such an important mission as a mom and as an entrepreneur. I'm so glad this is your, you know, mission and I'm going to join you on that, you know, sort of shouting about the working less to achieve more. It's, such a huge part and I've talked about it on the three mm-hmm. podcasts that we've recorded today whether we're coming from a intuition angle of how that works in your business or whether we're coming yeah. from a practical time angle which allows you to play working smart allows that creativity which not only gets you amazing results which feels really counterintuitive but it's the way <laughs> forward isn't it? yeah yeah it is because you find we've talked about it a lot you find that flow state because you're listening to what truly resonates for you and your lifestyle and then when you start working during your optimal hours that's really key right we all have better hours some of us are morning people night people you know it's you need to figure that out and and then things start moving I need to have a cat nap, literally with my cat scheduled um, in the afternoon, like at least two days a week. I need to curl up with a Bengal and yeah. just have a little chill. And that's my little reset time. And I know certainly in, in my schedule, I need to have at least two or three days where I'm working in a cafe or sort of co-working space. But, you mm-hmm. know, the other times I need to have no humans. I need to be around no humans yeah. and and just kind of be in my little shell of introversion. And it's important to know all these parts of yourself that has to fit with that picture of your family and your work and how it all goes together. So I can't wait for everyone to come and check you out and just come see what you're up to. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you, Joe. This was awesome. Oh, it's awesome to have you on. Thank you. (laughs)